Hello everyone, so welcome to the third video in the Finding Your First Bug series. Um, today we're going to be talking about manual idol hunting, which are idols, I'm going to explain to them, but they're actually a really complex name for a really simple concept. Um, but they can be great first bugs. My first bug was an idol, um, and my second bug was the business logic error. So, uh, really what I want to do is present a kind of interesting bug which can have some interesting res effects uh, and show you kind of how you can find them. Um, so with this, uh, same, same setup as before, we're going to have a kind of introduction to it, a kind of basic overview of how to find them, then I'm going to talk about case studies of some interesting idols in the wild, and you'll want to stick around for those by the way, there is, there's a crazy one. Um, and then I'm going to do a practical, although for a lot of practicals I like to work on live targets, we're not going to be working on a live target for this practical, simply because I don't want to actually find an idol. Uh, we're going to be worth looking at CTF, because it is the same to find them in the wild as it is to find them on a CTF. And I don't risk finding one by accident because I don't want to be, I don't want to disclose a bug to the public before it's been through. And, you know, just because I don't notice doesn't mean it's not actually there. And I just want to avoid that situation entirely. So let's start out. What is an idol? So an I idol as like a thing stands for insecure direct object reference, which tells you fucking nothing. <laughs> it's a really fancy term, which means that um, when you mess around with IDs, it doesn't authenticate. Um, so, for example, if your account ID is 4, if you delete account ID 4, it should work. It's your account, right? You have the option to delete your account. However, if you try and delete ID 3 instead by changing the request in, uh, you know, Intruder or Repeater, it shouldn't work. It's not your account. There should be some kind of authentication there. Um, and another example is really permissions. We're going to see these two strands of idols really in the case studies as well, which is where you start working with kind of authenticated versus unauthenticated users and then low permission versus a high permission user, which are two kind of different ideas for the same bug uh, and require different setups. So the other one, you're a guest. You should be able to view post ID 4 because you have the permission to view posts. You shouldn't be able to edit post ID 4 because you only have read permissions, you don't have write permissions. Uh, and there's an image on the site which I think uh, demonstrates this really well. It should do, it's from Bug Crowd. <laughs> um, so here we have a user requesting a document that belongs to them, which has the ID 1000, uh, but also able to get the ID, the document which is ID 1002, um, which is actually owned by another user, which they shouldn't be able to do. So why are these fantastic first bugs? Well, first one, you can find them manually in burp. You don't need to use any automation tools, although there are automation tools. I'm gonna put a link uh, below to a video I'm sure you've already seen um, about automating finding idols. Uh, and you don't need any technical knowledge. Like you don't really need to know a lot about how websites work, although it helps. It helps a lot to know how websites are built to be able to find locations where they are um they're really easy to find like they're not that difficult you only have to notice a request that uses ids um and sometimes their ids are like uuids where they're super long and sometimes they're actually uh, a, sh a, sp a number where it's like one and you can change to id2 um it can be a slog to find them like it does require some patience although they're not technically very difficult to find it's not hard to notice when a request might be an idol a lot of them have already been found so it requires a little bit of patience it requires you to go through some like task where you're like does this request work yes does this request work no and um, which is why there are automation tools and the method for finding them is really quite simple when you see an id change it to another id that you own <laughs> it's an important thing to note that you own because you can accidentally um, like affect a live user. Um, and then the other kind of, that's the simple one. The second one is if you can do something with a high privileged user, like edit a post, try it with a guest user, also try and edit a post. Um, 
like these are the two ways you find like uh, that's it that's all you need um and security impact is really easy to describe so when we looked at business logic errors we found that a lot of the security impact can be difficult to describe because essentially you're trying to convince them that this is a problem um but really when we look at uh kind of idols they're a lot easier to kind of explain because it's like a user can do something they shouldn't be able to like there is some kind of loss of data integrity there um so you're not going to find i'm gonna be honest with you you're not going to find a really high idol in your first attempt because they do require quite a lot of knowledge of the web app to, to understand the impact but there's a ton of super easy ones where it's like i can add a post to a private thread or i can add um a new discussion group to a website without being logged in that's that's the kind of uh impact we're looking for and that is still an impact that's still like a low medium first bug is great like a medium first bug is amazing a low is is good it's really good right so do not the impact here is easy to describe um and you can get some good impact from it so how do we actually find them? So step one, find endpoints with IDs in the request. Step two, change the ID. If it works, it's an idol. Very, very simple recipe. It is like idols are deceptively simple when it comes to exploiting them. Finding them can be challenging because you know, you've got to look through so many requests. Um, but if you can, when you start, to, especially as you do more of these, you'll start to notice those requests with ids you'll start to realize where there are you know in stuff like editing or deleting there might be quite a lot of authentication but actually maybe for a low privileged user the authentication there doesn't have to be as like um uh as strong essentially so it might not be there uh, and then when it comes to the different permissions we have find endpoints that require something like admin permissions log into account that has lower permissions such as guest permissions repeat the request to the admin endpoint so in repeater literally repeat request uh, and then just change the cookies to be the other account uh, so that way you're doing the same things the admin endpoint does but with the cookies of the lower user if it works it's an idol that's it that is the entire <laughs> way of you find these um so that's taking me about 10 minutes to explain idols are so easy to well they're easy to explain but the way they're sort of said and talked about makes them sound like super difficult but they're not they're one of the easiest bugs in my opinion to find for your first bug um so what we're gonna do now is like before um we're going to look at idols in the wild so i've i've done this a bit differently in my previous bug video we went from simple um business logic errors to more complex ones and this one we're going to talk about impact which is very low impact to medium impact and i've put in some bonus ones at the very end um which i think you'll find interesting so there are going to be some not easy targets but some easy things you can look for uh, once we go through these and i think you'll very quickly pick up what kind of endpoints we're looking for um so once again before i've included some links if you want to take screenshots but all of the links will be in the description um for each of the case studies and i'm also going to include um some more further reading as well because i think that was kind of missing from my last video so let's get started right the first case study, IDOR, deleting other people's tasks. Um, so this user has submitted a report to OX App Suite and had reported this ability to delete other people's tasks. So in this case, we don't really care what tasks are. They can stand in for really anything. Um, so we create a task with user A. We log in with user B, create a task with user B. Um, we turn on the interceptor. Uh, before we press delete user B's task and that that will do is that will send that request with the ID in it to 
in, uh, to interceptor and then we just change the ID to user A A's task. So if you think about user B as ID 7, user A as ID 5, you change B which would be 7 to 5 which is A's. Uh, and the impact of that is really other users can delete tasks. Now the impact for this one is actually slightly higher because the task IDs are sequential. Now sometimes you'll find IDs are actually UUIDs which are very long and it's very difficult to guess and this is going to be the case for quite a lot of these IDORs but when you are faced with an endpoint that has a UUID it is better to look at whether or not a low permissions user can do it because a low permissions user will be able to see um, the UUID because they'll be able to view it but they won't be able to delete it. Uh, so with sequential IDs it's really interesting because you could just go ID 1, delete ID 2, delete ID 3, delete etc etc. Um, but if there are UUIDs the impact is much more difficult to demonstrate. Although you could still be rewarded for a difficult to demonstrate impact it's just not going to be as high um so this is our first one this is a very simple idor and this is going to be the kind of steps we're going to take in the practical to go into more detail about how you find idors um and this is definitely a bug that a newbie can find 100 percent. it's find an endpoint and I'm going to go into detail about how to find endpoints uh, at the very end of this section. It is change the ID. It is does it work? And if it does work, submit the report. Bam. It will be. It will be. Won't be that high. But you know what? That is two hundred, three hundred dollars you didn't have before. Oh, blacked out the screen. Whoops. Um, case study. Yeah. Okay. Case study, idle bug to see hidden slow vote of any user even when you don't have the access rights. Um, so this is an interesting example of how if you don't explain a, a, the impact of your bug, then you're not going to get as much money. Impact is so, so important when it comes to writing reports. Like... You do not get a bounty based on if it's cross-site scripting. You get a bounty based on whether or not impact is there. If you can demonstrate impact with an IDOR, you can get a lot of money, depending on what impact you can demonstrate. Uh, and the impact of fix this is just not good enough to be a good example of a report. So don't write a report like this. However, it is a bug. So in this person in this person's report, he's created two accounts. He's used an admin account to create a poll. Change the visibility se settings from the admin account so people cannot see the poll. Um, but the guest that he found out that the guest account can still view the poll as long as they know the ID. Um, so this is really quite a low impact anyway because users can see hidden polls as maybe not a huge impact to have it's still a security impact though they still got a bounty um this is an example of a permissions issue so in in this case we have an admin and a guest right we have two accounts we don't have one account and zero accounts but we just have a way here to see how a guest user can have admin rights I mean, if I was this person, what I would then be looking for is whether or not there are more idols there, whether or not you can delete po delete polls, edit polls. Um, this is a great piece of advice in general when you find a bug. It's really good to try and escalate it in however way you can. Like, you know, it's low impact to view a poll, but if you can start to edit the poll, the impact is much higher. Um, if you can show that, you know, maybe an organization is using these polls for something important, that's a really good impact. Um, so it's a mixture of understanding the domain and then trying to find more of them and we'll see this in the next report so this is a super interesting report um, bypass of my three other reports and there are three report numbers ability to see full name associated with new relic accounts and this is kind of a mixture between an idle and information disclosure but this person has not just done his 
report once, he's actually found three different ways to achieve the same impact. And this is also a really good idea of how to get more impact from a single bug, which is, if it was fixed, how do I bypass it? So um, when he was doing it, he noticed that the app has two internal APIs and they have different versions. So he found an endpoint which exists on an earlier API, which is version one. And although maybe a later API has actually fixed the issue, by knowing more about how the new endpoint, the, the newer endpoints work, you can actually poke the older endpoint. So you can kind of imagine here that, you know, you have an API and you have, say, users, and you just, and you, there's no idle there. Like maybe change passwords, you can change other users' passwords, you fix it, and you push out API version two. But actually, if API version one is still connected up to the database and still being used for stuff like, you know, being, sh being sure that there's backwards compatibility with um, developers, actually, what you've got there is you've still got the IDOR just in version one. And although maybe the app only queries now version two, you can make a guess that if it exists on version one, maybe it also exists on or version two, it also exists on version one, and maybe it takes in the same, you know, the same request structure because it's only the code that's changed. This is a useful piece of recon advice as well, which is that if you can use your knowledge of newer things to test older endpoints. And what he found was a bunch of idols, like a, a bunch of idols that all do similar things. There's more information in his blog post. Um, and the impact is from knowing a sequential account ID. So if I've got ID four, someone else has ID three. A malicious user can use the API to view a lot of private info about an account by just the fact that an idol hadn't been fixed. Um, so my kind of takeaways from these two reports are the following. One, that you should look to bypass your own bugs and even bypass ones that have been disclosed because developers don't necessarily fix things correctly. Two is to check APIs. APIs can be full of IDORs because they're just, everything's only done on the client. No one looks back into the API and goes, wow, I sure hope that's not a problem later. And the third one is to look at different versions. Now this is really a recon kind of advice, but is, you know, don't just look at version three. Is there a version two or version one? If you can guess the differences between the two, then those can be great places to find bugs. So next one, replace other user files in inbox messages. Um, so this is for Shopify. So they have shops that have, or stores if you like, um, and users can buy things from stores. Uh, so users can also message a store and a store can reply and also attach a file. There's no protection on overwriting those files though. So a second store can upload a document with the same name. So you can imagine here that you know, you're know you running, say, I don't know, uh, Lee's Legumes. I used to work for a utility broker and every single time we'd need a business name, it would be who's in the room, let's ask, let's figure out what business they'd own by picking a, 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 a thing with the same name. So Lee's Legumes might sell legumes online and they a customer might say hey do you have you know what's coming n new in your i don't know summer catalog of legumes um so they reply back oh yes here's our here's our here's our summer catalog and here's our full catalog and you can imagine they might have a random name called full catalog dot pdf um and another store let's say Mike's mushrooms might also be selling mushrooms and might also have a new catalogue of their new offerings. Um, so they might have also call it summer catalogue.pdf and that would overwrite Lee's file essentially. Um, and assuming you could guess the names, which might not be that difficult when it comes to shops where you might have you know, prices.pdf, catalog.pdf, logo. Um, you just overwrite files for another business. Um, so not a huge, like, huge security impact, 
But actually, for the store's reputation, that might be a big problem. You can imagine someone defacing, like, the files that any business puts out there, right? So, the impact of this one, I think, is an interesting one to consider because when you put yourself in the mind of an attacker, you've got to be thinking about what can an attacker do? What can, what, what's the actual impact of this? And it's not necessarily always that a user can do something they shouldn't be able to do. Sometimes it's thinking about the real world impact. Um, so with that in mind, let's look back at these kind of low level and high level stuff. This is the last one before we get to our bonus ones. I'm really excited about the bonus ones. So low privileged user able to add new geographical settings to the admin account. Um, once again, this is a permissions one. So create a regular user account with no special permissions. You would also have your admin account. Uh, this person then poked at the API to find some of the setting modification endpoints. Now the easiest way to do this practically is going to be to log onto the admin account, click every single button to basically populate but full of endpoints. Um, and then try and run all those endpoints with the regular user. So in this case, this person couldn't um, view or update the settings. However, however, they could make them. So just because some <laughs> API endpoints, even about the same, um, you know, resource here, won't have idle. Sometimes some of the weird ones do. And the real impact here is low level users can make setting changes to a higher level user. Um, so when you look for um, idols also consider you know everything like just because something has protection doesn't mean everything else has protection that's why I say finding idols can sometimes be a bit of a slog because a big app will make a ton of API requests uh, and it will look for a ton of endpoints so it's really trying to build up your kind of sense that something's wrong to figure out which endpoints are the ones that are actually going to contain idols right bonus bonus case study time right validation and bounty award endpoint can be used to determine program balances this is a great mix of escalating an idol with a business logic error um so packer one programs have a budget essentially it's like a hidden field within the program sometimes they'll tell you how much their budget is sometimes they won't and that's what you get paid with and that goes down essentially so if they have fifty thousand dollars they pay out $10,000, they've only got $40,000 left. So in this side door, the ID was not being checked when it came to the validating if they had enough money. It wasn't actually going to valid, like actually pay somebody a bounty, um, but it was going to either return whether or not that it had sufficient funds or insufficient funds. So the ID door there is the ID isn't being checked uh, that it will work on another report that's not being controlled by the program. However, what this person realised, the way they managed to escalate it to the business logic error as well, was realising that it can be used to check the balance of the program. It is a mixture between changing an ID and see if it works, and then also making a number really, really high from business logic error, from the business logic error video. And you can use that to ch check how much money the the balance has if it says successfully awarded a bounty you know it's got ten thousand dollars left if it says insufficient funds you can keep hitting those endpoints until you find one that works and you know how much money they have right so the final bonus uh idol here is the ten thousand five hundred dollar idol um, idol to add secondary user in paypal.com forward slash business manage forward slash users forward slash API v1 users. So there's not a lot of info here, obviously, but I think it's really worth highlighting. So this was a $10,000 idol. Now we know idols are not that hard to find. However, you can demonstrate some pretty big impact here. The impact of this one was that a malicious user can add their email to a business account and that would allow them to do things like manage funds, so transfer money out of a business account to their personal account. Um, and this is kind of 
amazing really because just having an idol there like is uh, an incredible amount of impact like it's it's insane how much this person was able to demonstrate impact with something as simple as changing the id like you can almost imagine maybe this worked by them literally changing an idea or an email address right maybe that was it and it worked and they got ten thousand dollars for it so it's really worth considering impact when you start to look at idols because even a simple idol can create a huge amount of impact on a business right tips apis great for finding idols it never hurts to do some recon on api endpoints whether or not that's um enumerating potential apis there's um some great lists of api endpoints that you can use whether or not that's just clicking on every button you know that's still recon whether that's looking at something like GraphQL where you can do an introspection query. These are, can all be like great ways to find idols because they give you API endpoints. Now API endpoints aren't going to be as well protected as something like the client side would be. Uh, which goes to my next point, validation might only be client side, especially in, you know, mobile apps. There may only be basic client side in the application itself with the app assuming that what it sends to the server is going to be correct and validated. Um, and it can appear in so many different types of web apps. Like there is no web app where an idol might not be because there's so many different types of idols, whether or not that's looking at permissions, whether or not that's looking at, um, I don't know, anything really. Um, and it, can really range from low to critical like we saw some of the low bugs where it was like look you can remove other people's tasks to critical bugs where paypal has paid out 10k to somebody for an idol um and finally make sure you don't just consider non-logged in users um also consider low permissioned users as well like trying to get right permissions when the user only has re permissions like permission escalation if you can get it right so our practical, like I said, this time we're not going to be looking at a real web app for the sole reason that idols are so common um, that I could find one accidentally and not even realize it. So what I'm going to demonstrate is instead on the Hacker 101 CTF, but I'm gonna make this very clear. It would be exactly the same to find it on a regular web app. The method does not change based on what uh, app you're looking at and i'm going to be using burp community edition you do not need to pay for burp when you are just starting out okay right so i'm gonna get this set up so i will see you guys in a moment okay so we're back um we have the post book level from the hacker one or on ctf and then we have it set up in burp here uh to add it to scope i just right clicked and then i pressed from what well, what was said previously add to scope and it's how it's removed from scope so right we have our post book now what the first thing i just want to do is do some recon so we want to figure out how the app works i'm just making a username and password here and seeing what options we have so these are all the requests going here i've got this on target mode because what i'm really looking for is an api endpoint um so we'll create a post there we go so then we can kind of see if we look at this post we're actually sending a user id at the same time so send it to repeater let's change it to another user id and maybe if we refresh We've managed to make a, a post as the admin and this is the method you use to find idols you poke around you try editing posts you try deleting posts what have we done to that one right let's see so is that the edit ah that's the edit there so we go here we've got another id here id4 so if we do id1 what happens
we can't see oh we have yeah so we can start here to, to this this is it like i know this is on a ctf so bugs are everywhere and i know that's not the case for most targets you guys are going to be looking at but this is the method you use you literally go and look look for ids um sometimes you'll see them as ids like you know id4 here and then other times if we delete this you'll see stuff like this and that's still an id you just have to work out how the id is encrypted essentially um and the question then becomes what is what is this id and can we encrypt our own id to do the same thing um and that that's that's it like that is all you do is you just sit here you change things you edit every single id you see we've also got a view here so we can start to look and see what's there um and we can also look at low permission versus higher permission user like we know this is a low permission user uh i don't think this has support for no so if we did have a I'm going to take a random guess here and say the admin password might be admin or it might be password. No. Anyway, so you can kind of see how this all works. Um, and I know, I know this is a CTF and I know that it's not necessarily going to be representative of how it works in reality but actually this this is the method you use to find idols you just do some recon find everything oh i think i might have actually just found a flag there <laughs> anyway so um this is how you find idols in real life so I hope I hope this very short practical was useful. I know it's it's not quite like working on an actual target. Um, if you want some good places to start, something a program like Uber has a ton of UUIDs. But honestly, most web apps are gonna have like IDs everywhere. Um, PHP in general is quite well known for having these many like this many. Uh, issues with the IDs because this is basically on, on all of these um, I don't think it has a in all of these there's like a hidden input here where the user ID is basically hidden um, that can be something else to look for as well that won't be as common nowadays because we tend to look at APIs rather than websites and web forms but yeah, that, that's it. I hope you found this useful and I wish you luck finding your first bug, Idols. Thank you very much. Have a great day.